Hello everybody, so we're gonna talk about some quick perspective tips. These are things that I notice people who are just getting started into drawing and painting, or maybe have a, a year or two in, tend to make mistakes on the most. Perspective is something that could be scary for a lot of people because it seems very difficult and it's kind of hard to find really solid info on it sometimes because there's a lot to cover when you talk about the whole topic of perspective. So what I'm going to do here is talk about some very basic perspective really quick, something that's easy to understand that I think is going to really elevate a lot of your drawings and paintings right off the bat. So with that being said, let's get to it. So the scope of this video is really just giving you a couple quick tips about perspective so you can get up and running right now with your next drawing and painting. First thing we're gonna talk about with perspective is you can choose your difficulty. There's a lot of different aspects to perspective and some of them are, are very challenging, like three point or more perspective, fisheye lens perspective, but we don't need to make it difficult. We can make it simple. And with that, it means it's less mental load for you when you're drawing something. You don't have to think about, oh, but if this is this way and this is that way, don't worry about it because we're going to do a very simple understanding of perspective so you can just get started on it right away. Like we said, we're gonna keep it simple, but on the topic of keeping it simple, you can reuse your grid. Once you figure out a good perspective grid that you understand and can use, there's nothing stopping you from using that again for another drawing and painting with a different form or figure. A lot of pros, especially in the concept art side of things, they'll reuse the same pers perspective grid for almost everything. And the reason they why they do that is because that's not what they're focused on. They're trying to draw the content within the scene. They're trying to make the figures or the landscape or, you know, details within it and working with the color and, and form and value. They don't need to do something very complicated with perspective and there's no reason that you need to as well, especially if you're starting out. This is a subject that can be very difficult to understand if you don't know what you're doing. So why make it difficult on yourself? Just keep it simple. Reuse your grid once you understand a basic one. And the last one, like we just said, make it easy on yourself. There's no reason why you have to really push for a super difficult perspective because most of the time that's not what art is about. It's about the actual subject of the drawing or painting. So with that being said, let's look at a, a very popular artist that does this with their own drawings. This is Alphonse Mucha, and this is a very, very popular painting of theirs. And they did a whole series of, of these very vertical paintings of figures. And when you look at this, you might say, oh, this is kind of more of a, a graphic shape. This is not so much a 3D painting of a scene or something. So I don't see how there's gonna be perspective in this, but there is, and I'm gonna show you right now. I just basically plot out a simple horizon line and I'm showing some very key elements of the painting in relation to that horizon line. The most important thing to put in to any of your drawings and paintings is this line right here, the horizon. This is where the viewer is looking at the form and figure from. This is our eye level. And when I say our, I'm talking about the audience. When you're drawing something, it's important to know where this line is. So whenever I start a drawing or painting, I just put down a simple horizontal line. You don't need to skew the horizon. Don't, don't need to do anything fancy. Just put in a simple hor horizontal line. That is where the horizon is. That is where we're looking at everything from in the painting. It can be down on the bottom third, top third, in the middle. A lot of people like doing the bottom third or the top third depending on what they're trying to do for the subject line, so that might be a good place to start. So we see here, this is where the horizon line is. How do we know this is where the horizon line is? Well, when you're trying to find the horizon line in another finished painting, you have to look at where you're looking up at something and where you're looking down at something. The key part of the horizon line is, it is the dividing line between looking up at forms and looking down at forms. So you can see here, this is how I figured out where the horizon line was. I said, okay, so all the forms on this part of the painting, we're looking up at, we're seeing the bottom of them because we're below them. If you look in real life, if you look up 
and you look down, if you look up at something, you see the bottom of it. And if you look down on something, you see the top of it. It sounds very simple, and that's because it is, but it's easy to forget when you're trying to think of all these different things about the line weight, shape, form, color. Drawing and painting can be a lot mentally, so it's easy to forget these basic things. So I'm here to tell you that if you throw a horizon line in, it'll help you remember without being very taxing on your brain while you're working on creating art. So let's look at some examples here in the actual painting. We see here there's some nice contour lines on the belly area. We know that that's kind of a round form and we're seeing the bottom of it. And we can tell because we're seeing the shadow because it's lit from above. Another area we can see that we're looking at it from below is this area of the fabric by the elbow. This is a nice form because it's, it's kind of boxy and it has quite a bit of volume to it. And we can see we're looking up at it. This is actually the shadow below the arm. Now there's a lot of reflected light here, but this is still the shadow. Another place we could tell is, is the arms and the shoulders. So this arm is actually pushed and rotated backwards a little bit so it's behind the torso and we know the torso is upright because we could tell because we're looking up at it right we don't see the top of this area of, of the shoulder we don't see at the top of any of this we see the bottom of it and we see the bottom of this shoulder and arm and the reason why this is the bottom is because this whole arm is rotated backwards and we know that because this is in shadow and it normally isn't if you're lighting it from above Normally there'd be light on the bicep, light on towards the front of the, the actual deltoid area, but we know this is rotate backwards, so we know we're looking mostly at the bottom of this. Now, you might be saying, okay, well I understand that we're looking up at these forms, but the face, we kind of, we're looking a little bit above and, and straight on, why is that? Well the reason why the face looks like that is because the face is rotated forward. Right? So this is actually now the bottom of the head, where the top is back here. If this face was, was looking straight on, like with the rest of this torso, we'd be seeing the bottom of the chin, the bottom of the nose, the nostrils. We'd be seeing the eyes, but the cheekbones would be above, would be ob obscuring most of the eye because it would be in the way. So that's why that face might look different than you would expect if you were looking at it from below. It's because this is actually tilted forward. So with that being said, let's look at the other side of the painting. We can see here that we're looking at the top of the folds of fabric here. This is below the horizon line, and so we know that we're looking down at it. We don't see the bottom, we see the top of it. The same goes for some of these forms here. We're looking down at it from above. So we see, now this is all in shadow, but you can tell that this is, has a good bit of reflected light coming on it from outside the world. And we know we're looking at the, the top of it. Now you might say, hey, we're looking at the bottom of this area, but we're looking at the bottom of it from above because it's lifted up. And you can see that here, it's kind of pinched up here and pulling the whole fabric upwards. So even though it's below us, we're still looking at it from above, and that's the important part here. This is kind of a more of a complex form that they got going here, and I think that's because the folds of the fabric are one of the main parts of this piece to say, hey, these are some beautiful fabric folds. I want to make the fabric a very a very important part of this artwork, so that I'm going to focus on doing some interesting things with that. So that might be a little bit more advanced than you would probably want to do yourself, but that's okay because eventually you'll get there. So here, so that's all in good. We can see that we're looking up at things. We're looking down at things. What happens around the horizon line? Well, the horizon line is where we see things from straight on. And you can see there's a nice example of it here with this form here of the fabric where we're looking up at parts of it above the horizon line and we're looking down on parts of it below the horizon line. And right on the horizon line, we're looking straight at it. And if I take these off, you can see that the horizon line kind of nicely sits on some, on this form because we're looking straight at it. The horizon line's sitting at the terminator uh, between the highlight and the shadow. Or the light and the shadow, I should say. So that's the basic per, kind of perspective that they're using here. I didn't really put in a ton of perspective lines because this whole figure is 
just looking at it straight on. But even with a very simple straight on figure, there's still things to consider with perspective. So when you're drawing your characters or if you're drawing, you know, simple forms, keep this in mind. There are going to be parts that you're looking up at and parts that you're looking down at. One of the areas I see messed up the most with drawings is they'll draw the torso of a person correctly, right? They'll draw, if they're looking at it from below, they'll show the bottom parts of like the elbows, the, the arms, lower arms. But then when they get to the face, they'll draw the face like we're looking at straight on and it doesn't match with the rest of the, the drawing. And so when someone looks at it, they'll say, oh, something's wrong here, but I can't figure it out. Well, the reason why it looks wrong is because there are parts that are not communicating with each other on the piece. And so to keep things consistent, drop in a horizon line, just double check to make sure that you're looking up at everything above it and you're looking down at everything below it. A lot of times this happens also with feet. If you have feet really close to the horizon line, like you have the horizon line very low, like you're looking up at something basically from lying down on the ground, people will draw feet as you're looking at it from above, but in those in those instances, you really should be looking at the foot from the side. Uh, so that's another common area I see that people mess up on. Now for another important point that we, I want to talk about with you is that there's no reason you can't reuse some of this, some of these simple perspective grids. Even the masters are using very simple perspective in their drawings and paintings. And they do that because they don't need to focus on perspective as a difficult element. They just want to make sure that it makes sense in 3D space. And that's really all that matters for a lot of them because that's not the important part of the piece. And we can see that here with this next example. This is also by Alphonse Mucha and it's a, a similar kind of setup. We have a very tall piece, right? We have a very vertical figure and it seems like, oh, this kind of has a lot of graphic shapes, very flat graphic shapes, right? Which is all this border stuff. I don't really see any any perspective. There's no perspective in the background. I don't notice any buildings or, or trees that have perspective. There's a lot of flat graphic shapes in here, but this figure is still in perspective. I'm going to show it to you right now. I'm going to drag up the, the grid that we used before. I think I'm going to put this in a different color real quick so that you can see it better. So if I take this, I'm going to drag this horizon line up to where I think the horizon kind of is, which I think is around this knee, because this knee bends. I'm looking at, I know I'm looking at straight on because I don't see it from really above or below at this point. This is the same perspective, like horizon line with the above and below arrows as we used before, and it still kind of fits. If you see anything above this line, we're looking up at. We can see the bottom of the stomach just a little bit. We see the bottom of the rib cage around here. We're seeing the bottom of the neck. Now, once again, we have this face that's tilted downwards, but we're seeing the bottom of the eyelid. Um, we're seeing parts of the bottom of the nose. Not as much as if it was looking straight out because this head is tilted down, but we still see it. We're also seeing things below the horizon line from above. So this fabric we're seeing from above. We're not looking at the bottom of the fabric, we're looking at the top. Same with the fabric down here. And same with the feet. Here's an important thing, like we said before, a lot of times if you have the perspe or the horizon line right by where the foot level is, you won't see the top of the foot, you'll see the side of the foot. Well, they put the horizon line a bit further above, so we are seeing the top of the foot, but we're not seeing it so much. You still see a good chunk of the side of the foot and a bit of the top because it's not too far away from the horizon line. So if we put the horizon line way above, you can see things start to break down. It doesn't quite look right. For instance, we're looking at parts of the bottom of this leg, but it's below the horizon line. It doesn't quite make sense. You might say, well, we're looking at the top of this, this thigh here, but the thing is, we have to keep in mind this thigh is rotated upwards, so we're actually seeing parts of the side are actually more towards the bottom. Also this foot, but we'd be seeing it much further from above if the horizon line was all the way up here. So, once again, basically using the same setup for perspective, maybe move the horizon line around a little bit, but for the most part, it's the same as before. 
And I just want to make sure that's very clear that even the pros aren't really changing things up too dramatically here. They're kind of doing the same thing for a lot of their, their artworks here. You don't have to do anything too complicated with this. This is very basic stuff. Now, there's all kinds of things about one point perspective and two point perspective. You don't really need to do anything too much more complicated than that if you're doing things like landscapes. But for figure, the most important thing I urge you to do is drop a horizon line in. And it's going to help you so much more to make your drawing feel like a 3D form rather than just a 2D object. Let me know if this helped you at all. I hope that I see you in the next one.